So I've had this big cherry log kicking around my shop, well, since before I started making videos. Wasn't sure what to do with it. So for years, it just got moved from one corner to the other. Well, I finally looked at it this week and decided that it was time to do something with it. I've got this mounted on my circle cutting jig and I really had to take my time. I could hear the strain on that little blade I was using. And it's mounted onto the lathe with a faceplate. And I know it's going to be out of balance just because of the shape of the log, of course. Not awfully bad, but I couldn't go above about 300. A little less than that. Well, that's okay. I just took my time. I think the most difficult part of this right here was moving slow enough. You can see when I start moving a little bit too fast my hand starts bouncing. I'm just trying to hog too much off at once. But it's fairly smooth when I'm going slow enough. And every now and then it became more and more balanced, so I would turn up the speed. The specific speed, I'm not going to worry about telling you because every piece that you put on a lathe is going to behave a little bit differently. So don't get wrapped up around specific speeds. What I mean by that... Uh, you and I can have the exact same piece of wood, but different lathes. Or the same lathe, but different pieces of wood. I mean, if the weight is off just a little bit on either one of those things, uh, the speed is going to be affected. So just use the speed that's appropriate for the piece that you're turning. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to belabor the point.
And here I'm just designing the rim of the bowl with a nice bevel. And that is going to come back and haunt me later on in this video. I'll point it out. Well, like it says there on the screen, it's amazing what this audience is making. Let's take a look. Andy Jenkins made this. I love it. Lee Cook made these. Nice looking pens. Nice looking Christmas lights as well. Gorgeous. Very, very nice. And Danella Barnes. Certainly last but not least. Because, oh my goodness, are these beautiful. These are museum quality pieces, Danella. Just fantastic work. Thanks for sharing. All three of you, just wonderful. And I want to thank everybody that has subscribed to my channel. Still growing. Still just amazing to me. Thank you so much. Honestly, when I went back through this and edited this video... I really don't know why I felt the need to flatten the top of the uh, inside of the bowl that I was getting ready to hog out. Um, but I did, so I figured I'd show you. I was just having fun, I guess. Well, <laughs> I didn't even think about it.
You can see that tool rest is sitting a little bit too low. It's because the stem isn't long enough. That's the same uh, curved tool rest that I use for bowls on my jet lathe. So I'm going to have to invest in another one. For now I just angle the tools up a little bit. And maybe it was a weak spot to begin with. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that little bevel had something to do with uh, making it even more weak. But those little chips up there, I ended up uh, turning those down. And it didn't matter how far I went down, they just kept coming back. So I just got to the point where, well, you know what bowl, if that's how you want to look, that's how I'm going to make you. So it's got a couple of little chips on top. And they're sanded down just a little bit. But they are still there as part of the character of the bowl. I didn't use any super glue. I have to agree, I heard... Uh, Phil Anderson say recently, if you super glue a crack in a bowl, it looks like you've super glued a crack in a bowl. And I, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> it just looks better like it is. So. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what you think. It's a nice big food safe salad bowl with a little bit of character Semper Fi